In this video, we're going to talk about how to visually produce great shots with drone footage. Hey, what's going on internet? Josh Noel from Sunduck Film. So I just got my hands on the Mavic Pro and I wanted to produce a video on giving tips on how to visually produce great imagery from drone footage. So first let's talk about the video size or resolution. And a lot of people say you should shoot in 4K. I'm for you shoot in what works best for you. If 1080 works for best for you, go ahead and shoot in it. If you need 4K, shoot in 4K. Don't really worry too deeply about the resolution of your shot. That's not necessarily going to make you a beautiful image. But at least try to shoot in 24 frames per second if you can. So let's so the video format. I would shoot in the largest format that you can shoot in, which in this case for me is uh, .mov, which is going to give me a lot more data than the compressed MP4. So let's talk about the picture style of what you can change here. So you got the sharpen, contrast, and saturation. I would keep the sharpen unchanged at zero. I would bring the contrast down all the way as low as it can go to negative three in my case, and the saturation, bring that down as low as it go as well. So this will give you a lot more range to play with in post-production. And lastly, let's talk about the color space, and you're gonna wanna shoot in the flattest color profile that you can have. In my case, it's gonna be D-Log, and of course we have all of these other cool settings that we might want to play with but we don't want that because it will bake it into our image and it'll be harder to change it in post. And then lastly let's talk about video settings. The ISO I would natively try to keep it around 800 and the shutter around 50. Of course you're going to have to probably change these depending on the exposure outside. Of course you can look at ND filters to help you keep this very consistent exposure. And the reason why you would want to keep your shutter speed at 50 is if you're shooting at 24 frames per second, a good rule of thumb is to have your shutter double your frame rate. So 24 would be 48. In our case, we don't have 48, so we would keep it at 50. So let's take a look at the post color correction and grading of doing a cinematic drone shot. Now, the big thing is, is that you want to be able to get your exposure correct when you're shooting. So when you enter the post-production process, you can have all this data that is easy to work with. So I'm going to show you guys a few techniques here that you can apply to your own drone footage and doing a good job. So go ahead and we'll color correct uh, this shot right here. So this is an example of having a really sharp clip when I told you to keep the sharpness at zero. In this case, we had the sharpness at three and this was shot, you know, a long time ago. So I'm gonna show you kind of what we did to work around that just in case you have a very sharp clip. And the thing is with a sharp clip is that this looks very digital. This doesn't look, you know, clean, doesn't look like something was shot for a cinematic film, right? And I hate saying the word cinematic, but it's really the best word in this situation. So the first thing I wanna do is take down the sharpness of this clip. So depending on what, you know, editing, you know, color suite that you're using, if you're using Adobe Premiere, Final Cut X, a lot of these tools are gonna be pretty much similar. I'm using DaVinci Resolve, which is a free uh, application from uh, Black Magic Design. You can go ahead and download it. I highly suggest it. It's definitely the uh, standard for color correction today, color correction and grading. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the Blur and Sharpen tab here in DaVinci Resolve, and we're gonna go to Sharpen. We're gonna come here and reduce the sharpening here. So you can see a little before and after that, things start to kind of, you know, be more unified. It's not as digital, maybe a little too strong there, but you know, this is, you know, definitely a big difference here. Hopefully you can see this on YouTube. Uh, but let's go ahead and create another node. And here we can start playing with the actual balance of everything here. So I really want to start separating the data. As you can see, we do have a very flat clip here. And I really want to separate this so when we start boosting the contrast, it's easy to work with. So what I can do here is go to the lift gamma gain, which is over here in the corner. And I can bring down the lift by a touch, which is going to make the blacks a little bit more defined. Go to the gain, which is going to you know, make the whites a little bit more bright. And then it can touch up the gamma, which really in this case doesn't matter too much, but more of a preference thing right here. So a little before and after, we're able to do a little bit of post correction here, create just a very subtle contrast here, right? So we can create another node, and here we can just affect the contrast completely and kind of bring that up. And the one thing we want to make sure that we're doing is when we're looking at scopes, right? We don't want to have you know any information go below zero or anything go above you know a thousand here, right? So zero to one hundred. And what we want to do is keep all this data within, you know, this range. So, you know, it's not going to look like video. It's going to look more like a shot on film. So that's the thing we want to keep, you know, an eye out when we are increasing contrast. And from here, we can also increase the saturation, which in this case, I really don't think it's needed. But we'll move forward here and we'll continue to work this clip. So let's talk about all the greens in the shot. So to me, you know, all this is starting to look a lot more vibrant and a little bit more unrealistic, I guess. So I want to go ahead and take this out. And if with a program like DaVinci Resolve, you can easily do that. You can, you know, come over to, you know, your curves over here and you go to hue versus saturation and you can isolate 
all these points here. We can bring down the greens and also the yellows a little bit because it's a mix of yellows. And now we have desaturated our shot. And you know, now it's gonna start to look a little bit more closer to film, I guess. And let's go ahead and create another node. And this is where we can really start manipulating the colors here. So the lift, we come over here and really add like a lot of blue in the shot. So I was going more for a cold feel because it was like a, actually it really wasn't a cloudy day, but I don't know. I don't really remember. <laughs> I was just going for a cold feel. And we bring the lift down here to the blue. So all the shadows are gonna, you know, tend to be a little bit more blue. And we go here to the gamma. I can go ahead and pop this up just by a little bit, kind of just make it just a little bit more warm in some of the areas. And for the gain, uh, we'll see what we can do here. Just, you know, do a little touch over to, you know, the very dark blues here. And just a little before and after. It looks, you know, generally, you know, pretty cool. So, and now I want to just play with the curves here, which will give me a little bit more, uh, you know, control over the individual channels. So I can bring down the red curve and it's going to make the image even more blue. I could bring it up by a little bit at another point and it's going to, you know, make the reds pop a little bit more in the highlights area. Uh, you know, I can bring down the greens. You know, maybe I'll just, you know, bring this, I'll bring the highlight greens up a little bit. That's cool. Go to the blues and then, you know, maybe just do one pop up on the blue. Make this graded a little bit more. So, so that, you know, working with the curves gives me a little bit more, uh, you know, control over the colors and allows me to kind of create, I guess, my art, you know, per se, if you will. All right. And maybe from here, I actually would want to create just a little bit more, you know, contrast in this. So we go back into that original node and just increase the contrast by a touch more. And this will make it just a little bit more, you know, dramatic than, you know, what it is now. We're continuing to look good here. So let's go ahead and start fixing out some of these scopes here. So like I said, we don't necessarily want to have anything that's pure black or anything that's pure white. So what we can do is go to the curves over here and we go where it says low, low, soft, high and high, soft. And basically you could just like reduce the contrast to fix this in any other you know, application. Uh, but we come here to the low soft and obviously we can see that we're bringing up, you know, the, you know, the shadows. So we're still retaining that detail in there. And then the high soft, bring that down just by a touch. And then to top this off, what I would do is also go to the Luma versus set, which is more of a DaVinci resolve thing, but add a point for both the black and white and add a nice little curve here. So everything, you know, all the black pixels are completely black and the white pixels are white. So you don't have any like, you don't have any like blue pixels that should be black. And from an overview perspective, here's a little before and after, as you can see, we definitely got, you know, a very nice cinematic image here. And I probably should bring down the reds here because that is definitely very strong, but, um, this looks really good for a little before and after. So you can see that as long as you get your exposure correct, um, you can definitely have a lot of room to play with in post-production. And you definitely, the possibilities are endless. We didn't have to go for like a cool look here. We could do something a little bit more warm. So this will just give you a little insight on how to produce a great. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video and found it insightful. If you did, please drop a like and subscribe to the channel for more filmmaking videos just like this. And please be sure to hit me up on my social media networks. Those links are in the description of the video. And as always, I hope you have a good day.